With all the fuss surrounding the demise of the Super Sport 600 class, no more CBR 600 RRS, Suzuki GSXR 600S, Kawasaki ZX6 RS or Triumph Daytona 675 seconds, and only the heaviest, least powerful, least torquey and most expensive Yamaha R6 ever remaining, you'd be forgiven for assuming no one wants sporty middleweights anymore. But that's daft of course. There are plenty of Kawasaki Ninja 650 seconds, Suzuki SV 650S and Yamaha Montana 07 seconds being sold, not to mention a wealth of Honda CB 500S and NC 750S. So it depends on the definition of sporty, because it's the premium race replica bit of the middleweight market no one's bothered about. They're too small, cramped, intense and expensive. The traditional idea of a balls-out 600cc sports bike as a step in a motorcycling career evaporated when post-credit crunch prices went through the roof, our roads fell apart, and adventure bikes started making 160 bhp and handling like sports bikes, only Comfire. But the manufacturers aren't daft, and no one worth talking to ever bought a bike because it was dull. So, obviously, the Japanese have ditched the super-fast, expensive race wrap 600 seconds and, instead, relocated manufacturing somewhere cheaper, like Thailand, he engineered the bikes down to a keener price point, aimed them at new riders with A2 license compatibility, and are hoping no one remembers how good the previous generation of 600 seconds really were. And that's where Honda's CBR650F and CB650F came in. Introduced in 2014, 650FS were a ground-up rewrite of the previous year's outgoing CB600 Hornet and CBR600F, new engine, new frame, new styling, new everything. They even had a new country of origin. They were indeed built in Thailand, not Japan. The CB and CBR 650F standard, high revving inline 4 motor, basic steel frame, conventionally suspended and braked package contained nothing new or exciting. Honda simply gathered the expertise gained over nearly 30 years building liquid-cooled, 16-valve middleweight 4s, and squeezed the cost out.